that when we think about public life, whether it is in business or science or technology uh, or politics or the professions, uh, it is extremely important to think that there are certain contributing elements, one that has to do with knowledge, one that has to do with reasoning and decision making, and those are sort of the first ones that come to your mind. Uh, and when you think of knowledge, you think of a variety of processes such as memory and organization, of course, learning and memory and organization of the knowledge and the capacity to abstract. And when you think about reasoning and decision making, you think about the possibility of manipulating the information that you have learned and that is part of your knowledge base. But the very important issue that came up in the last decade and a half, uh, and it is now, as you can see from this meeting, uh, become so important, is that it is not just about knowledge and reasoning. It's about something else which has to do with emotion and feeling that is also a very important factor in the process and is an, a factor in the process of learning and in the process of deciding. So in fact, what we are at any given time is creators of solutions for our life. Sometimes we're non-conscious creators, we're just delivering solutions without thinking much. Sometimes we're thinking, but whether we're doing it semi-automatically or in a very deliberate way, we have to have this element that was part of the whole story, which has to do with emotion and feeling. So what I thought that I would do, since you have been listening to so much about this topic already during the day, is tell you about some fundamentals from my point of view as neuroscientist. I am not an applied scientist. I do the work on the basics of how the brain uh, functions in relation to these problems. And I thought that I would start by showing you um, a very, let's see, how do I advance? Probably here. Uh, I thought that I would start by showing you a very beautiful movie that is actually made of a variety of frames, hundreds of frames of brain imaging in humans uh, that is obtained with a variety of techniques, uh, most importantly magnetic resonance and uh, with some modern techniques that allow you not only to look at the brain as a whole but also to look at the connections that are being, that form the links between certain regions, obviously thanks to the neurons that integrate them. So uh, here we go, and what you're seeing there, uh, many, many hundreds of slices put together and constituting uh, that whole volume, the skull was still around it, now those slices have been put together, this is a real human brain, and this image that you're seeing now is an image that has connections uh, that are underneath the cerebral cortex and you're going to see them in the same directions that you see the brain above and you ended up with the connections of the corpus callosum. So this is just to put you in the mood of the fact that the reason why we can say many things that we do say today about brain function is not because purely of the way we behave, but also because we can connect the behavior with what is going on underneath uh, the surface of the brain, uh, inside the brain itself. So, let me start with the first topic, and the first topic is learning and memory. Uh, and uh, again, the preamble for this is to say that, uh, as it's implied by what I just said, uh, learning and memory is not just about the facts, but about something else that we learn together with the facts uh, automatically, which has to do with the emotional signal and with the feeling we get of that uh, emotion. But where this story starts is with facts. And if you're in business, if you're making decisions about a particular deal, uh, if you're planning how to market a product, you need to start with knowledge of facts. And that knowledge of facts, in terms of our own learning, begins in a structure that is now marked there in that red ellipse, uh, and that includes this area 28. 
and this is in the medial side of the brain, so it's not on the outside. The outside surfaces are on top with all the colors. The inside surfaces are below, and you see that there's an area 28 on the left and on the right, hemispheres, uh, but now we're going to hone in in this area. By the way, this is a real brain with the numbers put on top. We don't come like this. We don't have numbers when we are born, but uh, if you have a wonderful wife that is a neuroscientist that does the numbers and puts things where they are, then things end up like this. It would be fun if it would be this way.